Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another story time, you guys. And judging by the title, yes, I am trifling. I am trifling. I am horrible. I don't know what was wrong with me. I don't know what my problem was, but let's get into it. So the story starts off like this. One day, my friends and my cousins, they wanted me to go to the parade, the like, you know, the West Indian parade that they usually have in like New York, Miami, Trinidad, or whatever. So they wanted me to go to the parade. I did not want to go to this parade, you guys. I did not want to go. Everything told me not to go. My hair wasn't done. I didn't have an outfit. I usually always play masquerade. But this year, it was just wasn't that time. So, they convinced me to go. I put some little thing together. I had on these cute little white shorts. Little fishnet bra. Give a real island girl. And I was like, alright, let's just go see what it hits for. You guys, if you ever know... If you ever been to one of these parades, right? You know there's going to be a whole bunch of guys posted up with their friends on the sidelines hope waiting to see all the girls walking past the little cute little outfits or whatever the case may be that's literally the theme around the parade at least for the younger crowd i know the older crowd probably go to actually listen to the music and the culture stuff but the younger crowd they're going for that ass the girls are going for the guys and the guys are going for the girls and the got the money for the pussy and the girl got the money for pussy for the money it's like one of those type of things right so I went the whole time I was there I was getting hit one and if anyone knows me I hate being treated like I'm a piece of meat I hate when men are continuously hitting on me so if I go somewhere and especially if I'm with my girls and I get like persistently hit on I get so defensive I hate it it's so uncomfortable so at some point after being treated like some good up steak, I was like, I'm not answering nobody anymore. I'm not like meeting no one anymore. I'm good to go. So this one dude was running me down for like a block and a half, like like New York City blocks, like and I was ignoring him and he was like naming what I had on, like, hey, wait up, wait up and I was just like So my cousin who was standing next to me I guess she turns around to take a peek because she's like, oh, he persistent. He eager. Like, he want that. So she turns around to look and she's like, girl, she give me a nut. She's like, girl, he cute. Like, he look good. Like, give him a shot. Like, I'm like, as soon as she said that, I said, hold on. I immediately turn around because honestly, like, ugly men are bold. I hate to say that because BD's in the eye of the beholder, but ugly men be bold. So there be a lot of men that I just be like, the audacity of you to think that you can hit on me. Like, no, like, I don't like you. You're not my type. So when the cute guys in New York, they're usually really like, stush. Like, they want the girls to come after them. So when I saw, like, he was that good looking and he was like, Psh begging like a dog i was like oh he don't find those around here huh. uh, let me get that so me and him exchanged information or whatever the case may be and that was that so at that time i had a boyfriend okay so i had a boyfriend and me and my boyfriend we were like uh, you know you ever have them times in a relationship where it's like it's not really going good but then it's like, you don't know if that's something that you want to break off or try to salvage or whatever. It was one of those type of things going on with me and my relationship at the time. So, I wasn't really paying. Oh, I didn't name him. Ah, what are we going to name him? Because he had a Trinidad flag around his neck, we're going to name him Trini. Okay, so, alright. So, Trini... I didn't really give him too much play, even though I gave him my Instagram. I didn't give him my number, I gave him my Instagram. And he would watch my stories, write me on Instagram or whatnot. And sometimes I would answer, sometimes I wouldn't, or whatever the case may be, but I just kept it pushing. 
during this time now i took a trip to miami florida because i went to go visit my dad grave it was the year my dad one year anniversary of my dad's passing and then me and my friends also were going to carnival in miami that's where i was going to be doing all the masquerading and all the outfits you know the big feathers and the diamonds i'd be designing them i'm gonna add some footage here of some of the costumes i've designed for miami carnival so i was like i'm gonna wait until you know i go there to masquerade so i went there for my dad's memorial and then to celebrate after with my friends so while me and my friends are out there we go to this event and um Y'all know I gotta give y'all details. I can't just give y'all the story. I can't just give it to you dry. I gotta make that thing wet. I gotta wet it up for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, we go to this party. And we actually go with some other guys I know. Right? Some guy that was feeling me or whatever. But I wasn't really feeling him. But the party was like at least... It was at least an hour drive from where our hotel was in Miami. It was in Fort Lauderdale. And we wanted a free ride. So I was like, let's get a little, you know, nice with these men so that we get a ride or whatever. So they give us a ride to the party. So, of course, this was supposed to be a ride back. But while we at the party, I'm like, I ain't got no alcohol. I ain't got no ganja. Like, I need some alcohol. I need some ganja. Like, so my friend's like, where are you going to get that from? I'm like, this man, this man, kids, what you mean? What you mean? This is what they're here for, okay? These ninjas be wanting to be all in your face, or look up, breathe, smell the air of your perfume, and give me some, give me something that I need that I don't have to pay for, okay? So the ones that we caught a ride with, they didn't have nothing. They were like, um, they worked like government jobs, so they didn't really do like much like drugs or whatever so they ain't had no ganja or whatever the case may be and alcohol they were waiting online to go get bottle service because they didn't pre-order so i was like yeah i'm not doing that we already late i'm trying to get lit right now whatever so i tell my friend wait right here by the stage because she didn't really want to travel through the crowd so i was like wait right here i'm going to find some you know pre-game for us so little old me, you know what I'm saying? It was an all white party, but I wore neon yellow because I wanted to shine bright like a diamond. And I'm walking through the crowd like, excuse me, excuse me. I see my homeboys at the gazebo in the back. So I'm like, all right, let me go there because I know they got bottles on deck, all that. And if anything, I'm going to just tell my friend, come link me over here. So on my way there, I run into Trini and his friends. So he stopped me. I didn't even see him. He stopped me like... Hey, stranger. I'm like, oh, shit. Hey, what's up? And lo and behold, right in his hands, what did he have? Ganja and alcohol. He had henny and weed. Henny and weed. I'm like, oh, it's my type of party. Oh, right on time. I was like, okay, okay, okay. God has answered my prayers. I didn't have to go far. This is close enough for my friend to meet me. And I'm about to just chill out with him for the night. So I think my friend, I tell her, come over here. I'm chilling with him for the night. I'm with him and his his cousin, his brother, whatever. Not the brother that we're going to talk about. A mutual brother. But they all together. I'm like, all right, we good. We outside. So now we ain't ready to go back to Miami from Fort Lauderdale. And my friend is like, we're not riding with the other guys that we came with. I'm like... What y'all driving? So I turned the Trini and them to see what they driving. Because we came in a big, like, two-van cab when we came with the other guys. Like, they paid for two big Uber XLs to, like, take us there. You know what I'm saying? And they were going to do that to go back. So we hitched a ride. So I'm like, Trini, what y'all driving? So when he showed me, they driving a nice little red sports car. You know how the guys go to Miami and they want to go spend they asset money on somebody else's asset like by renting a expensive luxury car like for hundreds of dollars that's not even theirs i i don't i like riding in them but i'll never understand why they do it it's such a bad financial decision but anyways i'm like oh i want to ride in the red coupe to catch a little video whatever 
ride with them. And so I tell my friend, like, oh, we ride with them. And she like, oh, what you gonna tell these guys? I'm like, we ain't gonna tell them nothing. I don't owe him no explanation. That's not my man. What do you mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was a little awkward, but my Trini was a little gangster, so we did the with Trini. Trini was on some y'all ready like right in front of the other ninjas, like y'all ready to go. And I was just like <laughs> Yes. Y'all, that's one thing that is like the biggest pet peeve about me is that I really, really hate that I have such a soft spot for like real tough gangster guys. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know they're not good for me, but they make me so <laughs> like Niagara Falls and my panties. Like, they be the biggest daddy. So, um,. So we ride off with them. My homegirl actually ended up um, going out with some guy that she met at the concert. And then I rode back to Miami with them. He dropped me off at my B&B. He was a gentleman. He asked to come in. I said no. Because um, I, I didn't know him like that. It was bad enough that I rode with him another, like, stayed over. But then he was like, oh, come and catch drinks with me and my friends. So I did that with him. And then um, we went back to my Airbnb. He dropped me off, whatever. That was it. That was our little trip in Miami. So when we got back to New York, we was texting, linking and stuff. And we were dating. I know I had a boyfriend, but me and my boyfriend were not, you know, on good terms. Like, we weren't really seeing each other, talking to each other. But we weren't officially over either. So me and Trini were just kind of, you know, kicking it. So while we in New York... You know what I'm saying? That's why you cannot trust these guys that be chasing you, okay? Because when I got when we got back to New York, yeah, we were kicking it. But they had came a point in time, like a few weeks down the line. I don't know if it was because I had a boyfriend, which I was honest with him about and told him. But Trini started growing like real distant and like real funny style. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when I would try to reach him, I couldn't always be able to reach him. And he was always out of town doing his own thing. So I, the kicking is slowed down. It slowed down tremendously. And I really like Trini. I really did. Like he made my heart melt. Like he was so cute. He was funny. Like he was exciting. Like he, for the first time, he was like showing me like how to be excited and y'all i really like trini okay trini made me melt okay like he gave me butterflies like i was in a seven year relationship at the time with my boyfriend and i had never felt so alive until i started like talking and dealing with trini like he should just make life so exciting like <sighs> i like trini so bad like i don't even want to like talk about Trini the way I want to talk about Trini because that chapter of my life has become a huge roller coaster so I'm just going to talk about the brothers which Trini is one of the brothers so yeah so me and Trini relationship kind of started dying down but during the time of me and his relationship he introduced me to some of his um, mutual friends when he would take me out and stuff and one of the friends that he introduced me to was this girl. What I'm going to call her? I'm going to call her Kitten. Because she loves cats. She loves little kittens. I'm going to call her Kitten. And her name starts with a K. So I'm going to call her Kitten. She introduced me to... I'm going to call her Kitty. Kitty sounds cuter. He introduced me to Kitty. Kitty actually was already following me on Instagram. And me and her clicked right away. So one day, Kitty invited me to this party. It was like a house party. I guess it was something intimate. But um, she had mutual friends with Trini. So, of course, Trini friends would be at the party too. So, I hit Trini up like, hey, you know, Kitty invited me to this party. I wanted to see if you were going because I haven't seen you in a little bit. I think at that time, I didn't really see him for a few weeks. So, he was just really vague like, oh, well, I'm OT. I'm not going to be here. But if you want to go with her, rock out. Y'all do y'all thing. It's girls. Go ahead. So, I went with Kitty. Me and Kitty did brunch in the city, and then after that, I went to the house party. Now, when I'm at the house party, you know, me and Kitty, we're the best girls looking, the best looking girls there. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was trying to say. We're the best looking girls there. So, all the guys is on body, on body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. So, of course, I'm, 
I first of all I wasn't interested in any of these guys. Kitty says that they're thirst buckets and they do that every time she come around even though she grew up with them. And I'm just not paying them any mind because I didn't come here for that. None of y'all are attractive and then y'all are the kin of like y'all are the friend group of a guy that I'm talking to and y'all didn't see me with. You know what I'm saying? But they weren't like evasive. They weren't just trying to like outright talk to us. But they were just definitely in our face. Like in our space. Like you know what I'm saying? You know how men just be like hanging around and trying to make conversation but be innocent about it? They were just doing that. So now it's time for us to go home. As we're going home, we're about to order an Uber um, or whatever the case may be. Kitty's going back to her house. I'm going back to my boyfriend's house. So we're like, oh, we're going to have the Uber make two stops. So while we're in front of the party outside and we're trying to situate it, we see a nice little Bima, like a, a burgundy Bima push out. Like, like. So me and Kitty looking at each other like, so... I'm like, he steps out the car, whoever was driving it, the guy. So the guy steps out the car, he's tall, like, he's tall, he's slim, but he looks strong, and he's just like, like a man, but he looked like, I don't know, like, he was real, like, well, dressed, I could tell, like, he knows his fashion, like, he was very attractive, but I wasn't watching that, because I already had enough my problem so <laughs> so i was watching him but i guess he was watching me right and this is where kitty is before i get to that i don't want to spoil it <laughs> i'm cringing I'm about to tell y'all this so He's like, oh, what's up? Of course, he knows Kitty already. And he's like, hey, who's your friend? Whatever. And Kitty's like, oh, it's my friend Sarah, whatever. She just introduces me as her friend Sarah. She doesn't mention Trini or nothing like that to him. So he's just like, hey, whatever. I'm, what am I going to call him? I'm going to call him PNB Rock because he reminds me he resembles PNB Rock in a way. Like, as far as the height and the build go, whatever. So... He like I'm PNB or whatever the case may be, um, or whatever. So <laughs> I'm, like, I'm Niagara Falls in my panties. My panties you could have went like this, and the water would have been dripping down. So I'm trying to hold my composure, but I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm Sarah, whatever. And he's like, what y'all doing out here? Y'all leaving a party? And we're all like, yeah, we're about to go home. We've been here a while, but ain't really nothing going on. So we're about to leave. So he like, oh, um, there's some other events if y'all want to pull through. But I was just like, nah, I'm trying to dip. And Kitty was trying to dip too. So he's like, all right, I'll give y'all a ride. Y'all going far? And Kitty was like, nah, you know, I'm going down to this. It was like maybe 15 minutes that way. And then I was going maybe 15 minutes the opposite direction. So, being that he knows Kitty, I actually, I was like, you want to take the ride? She was like, yeah, yeah, he cool people. It's like, let's take the ride. So, I was like, all right, you could drop me first, and then you drop Kitty off, type of thing, right? So, he like, all right, cool. So, we get in the car, and so we get in the car, and he's making conversation with us, but he's making conversation with me, and before we even get in the car when we walk to get into the car he is a beamer but it's a two it's a four seater but you gotta push the front up right and somebody gotta sit in the back and somebody can sit in the passenger seat so when i started pushing the car up he came and he's like oh no let me do it so he pushed it up and then he told kitty get in so i'm like oh no i'm gonna go in the back and he's like no no let kitty kitty you am i going to back kitty's like I go to the back. I don't care. You know, Kitty was real ditzy. She ain't gonna fuck my nothing. She thought I go to the back. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go in the front then. So we in the car, making conversation, whatever. He asking us questions and intrusive. It's calm shit, calm shit. So now he's asking Kitty, like, oh, what's your address again or whatever. So I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm actually a little closer. I'm actually like, 10 minutes going if you make this left right here like 10 minutes this way if you want to just drop me first and he like oh nah nah i'd rather drop kitty first 
and spin around and come back because I'm coming back to the party. I'm not, I'm coming back because, you know, he had just got to the party when he was leaving. So I'm like, you know what? Beggars can be choosers. If that's the route he want to take, I'm going to just let him take that route. Not even knowing that he plotting, right? Oops. <laughs> he drops Kitty off, whatever. Now he's getting ready to drop me off. He starts asking me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what I like to do in my downtime, where I'm from, all these different things. He's complimenting me. Mind you, he's taking me to my nigga house. He don't know that he's taking me to my boyfriend's house, but that's where he's taking me. But I didn't make him drop me right in front. I made him drop me down the block. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be caught coming out of nobody beamer. You know what I'm saying? Like, nosy people watching around. I'm like, yeah, drop me up the street to the right. So, he goes, he dropped me, he pulls over. So now, um, before he pulls over, or the case may be, um, he asks for my Instagram or my number. So I was just like, you flirting with me? Y'all, y'all know I never know when a man's flirting with me. Like, I don't know if I don't got this, I know now, but at that point in time, I was a little young and naive. And then remember, I was like a, that ugly duckling growing up so I wasn't really a butterfly like I am now so I had to learn like about men really late in my years so I didn't I didn't know like he was flirting with me until he asked me for my Instagram my number even then I thought he was just trying to keep in touch because he probably liked my vibe or whatever so I gave him my Instagram so he asked for a hug it was awkward I was just like a hug but he smelled so good and he was so fine i need them for the little shoulder leg thanks for the ride like real friends only even though i wanted to <sighs> thank you for the ride i wanted to be all like white on ice on him so i go upstairs to my boyfriend Ugh. I don't even give my boyfriend at the time a name because he wasted seven youthful good years of my life well, I was a part of wasting that too because I allowed him to, but I just don't want to talk about him. But I went up there, miserable as hell. He was not even home when I got up there. He was out with his friends like he always was. He wasn't even home. So all I could think in my head was, damn, I should have just went out with PMB. Like, like you're not even home. So PMB hits me up on Instagram. I didn't give him my number at the time. I gave him my Instagram. And he was just like, oh, you know. I hope to see you again. I like your vibe. I would love to take you out. So I'm like, I read it, but you know you got to play hard to get. So I didn't answer right away. So I go and I hit up Kitty. I'm like, Kitty girl, you got home safe, whatever. I got home safe, whatever. We talking. I'm like, guess what? After you got out of the car, PNB was flirting with me. And he actually just hit me up on Instagram and asked me out. And she was like, girl, I didn't want to be the one to open my mouth because I don't know if it's my place or not like this is her talking to me she's like but I wanted to tell you from literally when he approached us and when he was in a car like do you know who that is and I'm like nah I don't know who he is I never seen him before I don't know this man I don't know this man you know why not I've never seen this man nothing so she's like that's Trini half brother what lies bluntly motherfucking lies you're lying since when they don't even look like are you capping she's like yeah they got the same dad they don't got the same mom <laughs> yo y'all my heart was crushed literally crushed i was like how how do i meet two great looking men that i'm attracted to that look completely different act completely different and they're related so closely related i'm like you're capping i'm like oh my god like what am i gonna do she was like there's nothing you can do like i'm like well trini's not my man and she's like yeah but you're talking to him right i'm like yeah but he's been acting funny and she's like and i'm like <laughs> i know i'm trifling like i was just thinking with my free young will like I wasn't even thinking about anything else so I'm just like I know what is a girl to do what is a girl to do
that's how I felt heartbroken so I was like I'm gonna just go ahead and tell PNB like hey you know like thank you for the offer that's sweet or whatever but I'm actually me and you don't know each other but you know I'm actually dating your brother Trini right now and he was like for real because he I talked to him all the time he didn't tell me he had a girlfriend I was like well I'm not his girlfriend we just you know talking we went on a few dates or whatever and he was like okay well then you're not his girlfriend and I'm like yeah I'm not and he was like all right cool well I'm gonna call him I'm gonna let him know I met you and I'm gonna ask him what's up if I could take you out I'm like what <laughs> I was speechless I didn't know what to say I was just like I don't know whether to be like afraid or turned on or like disgusted with myself I didn't know how to feel I was just like I was feeling all type of hot like I was hot I had goosebumps I didn't know I'm like what do you mean what do you mean you're gonna press your brother about me uh, I'm laughing but this this whole thing is not funny because it didn't end funny at all like I this thing caused me so much stress and tears that I'm happy that today I can laugh at it but there was a point in time where I had gray hairs from this situation right but nevertheless I'm like no don't do that like that's crazy like he was like honestly the way I look at it is like if you know, like, I like you and I feel like if my brother was serious about you, he would have, you know, took action, like, already. So, you're not his girl, so I don't think he should mind. So, I didn't really say nothing after that. Because at that point in time, Trini wasn't really saying much to me anyways. He was doing his own thing. And when I was looking on Trini's stories, he was looking like he was outside with a lot of gal and all them stuff with his cousins and them things you know doing him and the day I had a boyfriend me and Trini was an exclusive we were just talking so I couldn't say anything about it I couldn't feel away so now I go back and I tell Kitty the update or whatever she's like girl don't don't do it I know this family of brothers they crazy they already have sibling rivalry and feuds don't be a pawn don't do it and I'm like oh I want to be a pawn so bad I want to be a pawn like she's telling me not to do it and I'm just like I know I'm not I know I'm not but girl yes I did I did but wait wait I didn't but I did but I didn't so <laughs> Again, nervous and all cringy, like telling this story because, like, I thought I was over it already, and it's been so many years, and I'm still not over it. So now he links me back on Instagram, and he's like, "Yeah, I just got off the phone with Trini, and I told Trini I met you. I'm gonna take you out." And he said, "Cool, whatever. Do you, bro?" I was like, "What was his exact words?" He said, "Cool, whatever. Do you, bro?" Like he repeated it. I'm like, "Oh." So, Trini, I'm yours to just give away. Like, that's how much you think of me? Like, really? Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. So, while I'm, like, on Instagram, DMing back and forth with PNB, Trini FaceTimes me. Right? Mind you, I'm at my boyfriend's house, but he's still not home yet. So... While Trini FaceTimes me, I'm on the phone with Trini. In the midst of the conversation, I start hearing keys in the door. So I run. Like, I run to the bathroom. And I turn on the shower, like, mad fast. Like, so I'm on the phone with Trini. And Trini, like, oh, what's this? What's this? My brother just called me, whatever. And I'm like, I can't hear you. Like, I'm in the shower. I gotta text you, whatever. Because I know my nigga's about to come in. At that time, I didn't know if it was him or his mom, but I just didn't want to be caught in there having that conversation on FaceTime with another guy. So, I was like, let me just text you. So, now, I'm texting with Trini, and he's all like, yeah, you know, my brother hit me up, asking me what's up with you, whatever. 
what's going on i'm like oh well you know honestly i didn't know that was your brother but he seen me and katie at a party he offered us, offered us a ride home and then before i knew it he was asking me out or whatever he was like so what did you say i was like i didn't really answer him yet i told him that me and you talk and he was like oh well if y'all had a deep enough conversation to get to asking each other out then do you do you i'm like what do you mean do me he was like yo my nigga do you like he started getting real hostile real upset real insecure real bothered and then he hung up in my face so i was just like all right all right trini you was already moving real wacky before and now you pressed about a little date i got asked out on that i did not even agree to yet so whatever so i was just like all right cool so i i told pmb like oh you know your brother hit me up and he wasn't really happy about you hitting me up hitting him up about me and he was like well that's not what he said he told me it was cool and i'm just like i mean yeah like he's not gonna want to look pressed in front of you especially if like in my head i'm like yeah i have sibling rivalry according to kitty you know it's probably an ego thing like he's not gonna want to look pressed about a girl in front of you so you know what I'm saying? Trini basically was on some, if you could take my bitch, you could have my bitch type of mentality. You know what I'm saying? So, I respected it. So, I told um, PNB that I didn't really think it was cool for us to go out on a date or whatever. Because Trini not really cool with it. He wasn't really taking no for an answer. Over the course of the next couple of weeks, he really like kept pursuing me pursuing me on instagram pursuing me and the more pnb pursued me the less i heard back from trini like i would try to hit up trini talk to him he wasn't answering me he was aching me all that but pnb was on body you know what i'm saying pnb was like hitting me up good morning good night how was your day you hungry like he was like on it like you know what i'm saying so eventually he told me like yo you know what since you don't want to go out with me how about you come out with me and my friends me and my friends are all going to have brunch or whatever at that time it was like city island in the bronx if y'all know where that at he was like about to get some seafood i would love for you to come so i'm like who's going he's like oh me and like two three of my homeboys and like um four of my homegirls i'm like all right cool you know it sounds like a big enough group set and you know what i'll come so PNB comes to pick me up in his little Bima and he lets me drive it y'all. I was not excited because Trini, Trini never used to let me drive his car. He was real funny with his car but PNB had a better car than Trini and he let me drive it. So I room room into the city like woo woo like I'm in the Bima like Bima when I need like you know what I'm saying. So we getting along y'all. I had the best time with PNB. Like, PNB was so like wholesome. He was so like, like I felt comfortable around him. Like I could let, I could be me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where Trini was a little more like stern, and I need you to be like this. I need you to act like this. But PNB was more of a like, oh, like I accept you, you beautiful queen. Like I, I. I cherish the ground you walk on like he was a little more catering to me and my feelings and who I was like I just loved it like when it was around the time when I first started YouTube too so I was sitting down like filming little YouTube clips and he would come in the background like yeah make sure you support her and like play with my hair and just be he was just so sentimental like I really like PNB you know what I'm saying I like PNB for all the reasons why I didn't like Trini. And then I liked Trini more because I just knew him more and I didn't know PNB. So later on, he dropped me home. He was such a gentleman. He never made a pass at me. Yeah, we had little conversations that were a little flirty, a little X rated, but he never made a pass at me. Me and P and P and B ended up going out to maybe like two more dates and then he invited me to like a toy drive he was having. He was real business oriented. Like he had his own businesses going, clothing line, which me and him related on. But they both were like that. Trini had his own businesses too. Trini was a music producer. He had his own studio. I'm giving way too much information, but yeah, they were both just polar opposites, but strong energies like I couldn't even it wasn't something that you could compare like they were so extremely different you know what I'm saying 
so I could like I didn't know what to do at that point so it came down to a point where Trini hit me up and he actually came by to see me and he told me he was like well you know what I'm saying I know that you had enough conversation for my brother to ask you out and I really wasn't jacking that that's the reason why I didn't talk to you for you know these past like I think at that point probably been like two months but I would like to start fresh or whatever the case may be I'm thinking in my head like nigga wherever you was at you're not happy now you're trying to come back over here at this point I'm still like on on and off turns with my boyfriend but we're off at the time the time I was dating PNB going on a few dates me and my boyfriend was completely off but me and PNB had never been sexual right but me and Trini was so um at that point I was scared I didn't know how to tell him like that I've been going out on dates with PNB so I'm just like, damn, PNB had the boss to tell him the first time. I'm about to link PNB and tell him what's up and tell him to tell him. So now Trini's on some basically like he want to start fresh. She would see where things can go, whatever the case may be. He asked me if I was still my boyfriend. I told him, nah, right now we on off turns. And he like, you know what? Like, let's work on something. Let's try to make this work or whatever. So now I'm like, oh my God, like I'm not only in a love triangle, I'm in a square again. If you guys not have not seen my love triangle square video, tap into it. But I'm like, oh my God, how do I always end up in here? Like, ah, it must be my pheromone and my sex appeal because I don't know. <laughs> Let me start, right? So now I hit up, so me and Trini, before I hit up, PMV me and Trini just talk things out I don't tell him what's going on I don't come clean I was scared as hell I didn't know how to say or what to say so I just didn't say anything at all so I hit up PMV and I told him what happened I told him he came to link me so PMV all like did y'all sleep together or whatever and I'm like nah we didn't like we just talk so he was just like so what are you gonna do I'm like are you gonna tell him that we've been you know what I'm saying like talking or whatever he like honestly like you you say something he was like if you want to deal with me and you want to see where things going with me you tell my brother that it's clipped and you moving forward with me if you can't do that then I'm not doing this no more so I'm like oh my god I'm like oh my god oh the fun is over the fuck kitty told me kitty told me not to do this kitty told me i would regret this uh, and it was at that very moment i knew i fucked up so i'm just like now i'm basically pmb is giving me an ultimatum trini don't even know why i go on pmb so y'all it took me about what 48 hours to make this decision and both niggas was on my back pmb was on my back about whether i spoke to his brother or not and trini was on my back about like just linking up and like you know getting to know each other more and doing stuff and i just felt so fake i felt so fraudulent i felt like oh my god like and i felt like it wasn't even worth it because it was like I didn't have like any sexual intercourse with PMB, but it was just the mere fact that we were in each other's proximity and we were hanging out with each other that was just crossing the line. You know what I'm saying? Even though there was no real relationship lines to cross, it was just all jumbled up. Like it was just a maze of fuckery. Like, so I'm just like, all right, take me 48 hours and ultimately. I decided to let P and B go because at that point I felt like what did I feel like at that point I was weighing out my pros and cons P and B lived in Los Angeles and he would come to New York because he had businesses there family there he was in station here though he was in Los Angeles and I met him second and I don't really know him like that. And I would be taking such a huge risk to just like drop 
Trini who's offering me a full blown love and relationship and a fresh start for someone who's just a lot more riskier to take on even though I was so attracted to PMB like like I said it was just two different energies just pulling at me but I felt like the most logical decision was to move forward with Trini and I asked PMB I was like I'm sorry about this decision honestly I didn't think that PMB would be hurt I did not think that like I'm thinking these are ninjas and they good looking ninjas they don't care but I guess it's not even a hurt thing I think it's a pride thing where you feel like another man was chosen over you because when I made this decision and I told PNB he was really upset like he felt away and I was just like I'm surprised you feel away I didn't think it was that deep but I guess it was for him so I asked him like hey do you think that we can maybe keep our little couple of weeks of dating under wraps like if I don't say anything to Trini like you don't gotta say nothing to Trini and he was just like whatever I don't really care and then just kind of hung up the phone and kept it pushing we never spoke again after that right he, got, he, he blocked me on Instagram like he felt away so I was just praying and hoping that this man don't say nothing and for a while he didn't for a while things went on merry go round happy fence for me and Trini me and Trini started building a big relationship doing big relationship things and at that point I broke up with my boyfriend I was with Trini and we were having a little white picket fence situation so now my birthday comes up this is about almost a year later right I knew things would be too good to be true. Me and Trini have been dating happily now for like a year. And PMB, like, I haven't heard from him. Every time Trini would bring him up, I would just like cringe and try to act like I don't hear his name or anything a part of the conversation. Anytime I knew that he was in town and they were having a family event, I would refrain from going. Even though Trini would force me to go, I'd be like, no, I'm good. If I knew PMB was going to be around, I just made sure I stayed far, far away. So one year for my birthday, that year came or whatever, a couple of months later, and Trini is with me and he has like my birthday gifts or whatever and he had went all out for me for my birthday this year like he really did his big one like he got me so many nice luxury gifts and i was really appreciative because you know my last boyfriend used to give me nice gifts too but he he went like all out on the fashion tip for me which i was like really appreciative of because it was like he got things that were like really me like you know so while he's giving me my gifts he turned to me and he's all like, yo, I need to ask you something. Like, I'm like, yeah, like, go ahead. Like, I'm happy. I'm celebrating. He's like, yo, like, you and PNB, like, y'all had a little dating situation. I was dating. Like, what's, what's up with that? I'm like, huh? What? Is <laughs> Me? I was dumb founded like i didn't know what to say cat had my tongue like all that like i was just like i didn't know whether to say yes no because you guys already know nine times out of ten when a man asks you a question it's because he knows the answer to that question prior to asking you he just wants to see if you're even more of a trifling lying disgusting ass bitch He's just trying to test to see the level of trifling you are. He's testing your character. Nine times out of ten, he knows the answer to the question that he is asking you. So I knew he knew it was that. So I did the smartest thing that I knew to do. What I said? I denied it. I said, what? Me? Never. No. Absolutely not. Like, what did you think I was going to say? Yes. Hell no. I said no. Like, to the point where I almost started crying, like, no. Because I didn't know, at that point, y'all, I was scared. If I was scared to tell him when we wasn't in the midst of a bad situation, of course I'm scared now. Especially, Trini had a temper. So, I didn't know if he was liable to hit me, attack me. Like, I didn't know what was going on. We was in a car, in the middle of the street. We were, I wasn't even home. Like, I didn't feel safe. I didn't know what to do. So, the only thing I needed to do was to deny it. He like, so he like, tell the truth, don't lie. 
because apparently remember the brother that was at the festival in Miami with him the mutual brother I guess PNB confessed to him and told him not to say nothing and he came out and told Trini let's call that brother you what's that boy name from recess with the freckles and the red hair they used to snitch on everybody he's that one from recess and he looks like him freckle face yeah he snitched he snitched snitch ass i guess he was doing a good thing for his family for his brothers and then they at that time it was just kind of like i did not like cross line lines you know what i'm saying like i could have went all out i could have been sexual with pnb i could have me and pnb literally went out on like two to three dates and we were more like a soul connection than anything like it wasn't even physical you know what i'm saying me and trini we were connecting more on a physical level than a soul level and that's why it was so devastating for me because it's like you have one person that you connect with on a soul level and you have one person you connect with on a physical level and it's like i was young i didn't know what was good for me i didn't know what to do i just knew that i shouldn't have placed myself in that type of situation in that predicament and after I denied it and then he told me that his brother came out and told him, um, I had to come clean. I had to come clean and he was upset forever. He's still upset to this day. He made me suffer for like a whole nother year. Like he kept pretending like he was going to forgive me and just kept making me suffer <laughs> for like, until I was like. All right, I've had enough suffering. I can't keep paying for this crime. Because, like, at that point, PMB then moved on with his life, had a girl and everything. And then here I am with Trini. And we're, like, still together. But we're having, like, the worst relationship because he can't trust me again. And he can't get over me and PMB. And he doesn't trust that we weren't sexual. He doesn't believe anything. So it's like he wants me to be with me still. He wanted. But then he also just could not look at me the same. And could not love me the same. And when I realized that. I just let the situation go. Because I was just like I can't force you to love and trust me. Like I made my bed and I have to lie in it. But one thing I'm not going to do is be a prisoner in somebody else's you know unhealing like i can't pay for this for the rest of my life and when i would say that to him like i can't keep paying for this he would basically tell me like yeah like you need to keep paying for this until i feel good about it until i feel better like i'm like man you're never gonna feel better you're never gonna feel better like what happened happened like you know what i'm saying i messed up it is what it is at this point and one thing i learned from that situation is that the second I learn of certain information that is liable to get me to find out if I fuck around, I need to stay away from. You know what I'm saying? So, all in all, that was the story. I don't know if I missed any key details. I try to keep it as concise as possible because if I gave you guys every single detail, we would be here for four hours or more. And I'm trying to keep these story times under an hour. Usually they go past the hour, but I know some people say they like the long story times. But a lot of y'all are not watching the whole video because my click-through rate is not that long. But I do appreciate you guys coming in and listening to my stories because it is like a diary for me. I get to release it. And then sometimes I feel like I took a luggage and a load off of my shoulders so this is definitely one of the stories that have been sitting on my chest for many years for a long time and sometimes i feel like i still battle anxiety from being in that situation because there were a lot more extensive details that really fucked me up in that situation that it took a long time for me to heal from but i'm just glad i'm healed y'all and and honestly, y'all, I just wish everyone in that situation a uh, prosperous and an abundance of love in their life. You know what I'm saying? For me, too. And, yeah, only thing I regret is I'm not hooking up with PNB because I knew that was going to be ah, awesome. If you're not going to do anything else, make sure you do what? Like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're not going to do anything else after that, make sure you do what? 
pour into yourself until next time you guys bye and don't forget to turn your notifications on